This year, the American Academy of Neurology introduced something very interesting into the program, which is a debate that uh, is on the topic of whether robots and artificial intelligence can replace neurologists. Uh, and uh, it's not something inconceivable because there are physicians that ultimately will be replaced by artificial intelligence. Those people that are dependent on pattern recognition. So we're seeing it now in such disciplines as radiology, where lesions on chest x-rays are picked up better by artificial intelligence than people reading them. Dermatology, another form of pattern recognition. Uh, the fundoscopic examination. Electrocardiographic interpretation. Probably at some point in time, uh, electroencephalographic uh, interpretation. Those things uh, will be replaced. I mean, there's no reason to have a physician reading over them. Maybe. Uh, for those that are outliers that look very unusual to have a physician look at them, but otherwise a machine can do it as well, if not better, than a human being. But there's something unique about what neurologists do. And a number of years ago in uh, JAMA Neurology, I wrote a paper entitled Neurologist, the Last Physician Scientist. And uh, in it, what I address is that we are the last physicians that are still performing detailed physical examinations. And there's a reason that we do that, and that is that uh, when we hear someone's story, we generate hypotheses, just like a scientist generates hypotheses based on observations. And those hypotheses are uh, importantly, where a lesion is located in the central nervous system or the peripheral nervous system. And we test that hypothesis by actually examining the patient. So the examination is a critical component of what we do as neurologists, and it'd be extraordinarily difficult to program a robot to do the types of examinations that we do, which we do with tools that are essentially primitive a reflex hammer, a pin, a tuning fork. These are what we do our examinations with. In the course of the examination, not only are we testing the hypothesis of where the lesion is, but at one and the same time, we're developing a bond with the patient that doesn't exist when that component of the um, examination isn't done. And in fact, what we've seen, so if you look in 1975, the average time that a physician allotted for a new patient, this is physician in general, not just neurologist, was one hour. The average amount of time in 1975 that a physician allotted for a follow-up patient was 30 minutes. Today, the average time for a new patient is 12 minutes, and the average time for a follow-up patient is seven minutes. You cannot develop the bond in that period of time. And there, are, there were people back in the early part of the 20th century, in the late part of the 19th century, uh, including William Osler, a very famous neurologist, who said, or he said that you cannot adequately evaluate a patient unless you allot at least one half hour and they don't feel satisfied unless you do. And that's true today as well. So what happens when you walk into a physician's office these days? They've got their nose in the computer, they're busily typing away, they don't even look at you, and they hardly examine you. It's a little different for the neurologist. He may have his nose in the computer, and I would argue that that's not how an examination should be performed, but they do examine you a good neurologist examines you, and they examine you for the very reasons that I've stated. So I think that neurologists are quite unique. Uh, and importantly, to develop, if you were to ask individuals who develop AI, um, when various people in the workforce are going to be replaced, they'll tell you that 
the person selling retail may be replaced in 12 years, and that even the surgeon may be replaced in 35, and they themselves may be replaced in 125 years. There was actually a study that queried individuals that design artificial intelligence, and that's what, these are the numbers that they came up with in the aggregate. Um, I would say that the investment uh, to replace neurologists because of the complexity of what they do and how difficult it would be and how few of them there are and how little they contribute to the cost of medical care would not make it worthwhile. It's simply not worth the investment. 